and welcome to part four of our discussion on the Dynon AP74 autopilot system and its related components. I'm Ashley Pelk and this video is brought to you by the Blue Skies Flying Services. When the autopilot is flying the aircraft in altitude mode, a yellow out of trim indicator can appear to the right of the autopilot status indicator as seen here. This alerts you when the pitch servo detects excessive load on the elevator, which would result in a large pitch excursion when the autopilot is disengaged. The indicator instructs you in the direction to trim the nose to produce more neutral trim. In the example, the out of trim indication will remain illuminated until a more neutral trim position has been established. If necessary, repeatedly press and release the respective trim switch located on the top of the flight control stick until the out of trim indication is extinguished. During turbulence and small bumps, the trim indicator may flash on and off. Do not take action based on the trim indicator until it remains on for several seconds. Okay. When the autopilot is engaged and aircraft airspeed rises above the maximum, the autopilot enters an airspeed hold mode, pitching the aircraft up to prevent exceeding maximum airspeed. When the aircraft's altitude rises above the target elk bug and the autopilot cannot pitch the aircraft down without going above the maximum airspeed, the EFIS presents the prompt, Max Airspeed, Reduce Power. Likewise, when the autopilot is engaged and aircraft airspeed drops below the minimum, the autopilot enters an airspeed hold mode, pitching the aircraft down to prevent dropping below the minimum airspeed. When the aircraft's altitude drops below the target ELF bug and the autopilot cannot pitch the aircraft up without going below the minimum airspeed, the EFIS presents the prompt, Min Airspeed, Add Power. When you select the TRK or Track Mode of Operation, the autopilot will fly the track that you have selected with the heading knob on the HS34 HSI module. The difference between the heading mode and the track mode is that in the heading mode you will maintain the selected magnetic heading but will drift with the wind, while in the track mode your heading may vary due to the winds in order to keep you on the specified track. Note, you can only select the track mode while in GPS navigation. If you have NAV selected on the HS-34 module and you desire to have the autopilot track a course on the VOR, localizer, or back course, you must first tune and identify a VOR, localizer, or back course on the SL-30 NAVCOM. Go ahead here and put in a frequency of 112.8, switch it over, and I'll select my course here of 340 degrees. Finally, pressing the nav switch on the AP-74 and pressing the autopilot switch will engage the autopilot. The autopilot will establish a 45 degree intercept angle to the selected course and will then track your course. Selecting an ILS frequency will automatically display a glide slope scale just to the left of the attitude indicator on any PFD display and just to the right of any HSI display. Set in my frequency of 108.1. Switch it over. And here you can see the glide slope indications. The glide slope scale is set to plus or minus 0.5 degrees. Selecting any nav mode on the HS-34 will display a lateral course deviation scale just above the skid slip ball on any PFD display. In the GPS nav mode, the width of the scale will be plus or minus 5 nautical miles in the in-route mode, plus or minus 1 nautical mile in the terminal mode, and plus or minus 0.3 nautical miles in the approach mode. The CDI will be colored magenta. In the VOR mode, the course deviation scale will be plus or minus 5 degrees in the VOR mode, 
plus or minus 2.5 degrees in the localizer back course modes. The CDI will be colored green. Okay. Control wheel steering is an autopilot mode that permits manual control of heading. There is a control wheel steering mode of the Dynon autopilot. With the autopilot engaged, Pressing and holding the red autopilot disconnect button for more than two seconds will engage the autopilot in this mode. You can configure your autopilot to engage in either of two different ways. It will either engage in heading hold, in altitude hold mode, or in last heading in altitude mode. We have our Piper Sport configured to engage in the heading hold and altitude hold mode. Press and hold the autopilot disconnect button. Initially, you will see autopilot CWS CWS. Position the stick to a desired pitch and heading, release the button, and the current heading and altitude will be maintained by the autopilot. You will see AP heading out displayed in the bottom left hand corner of the PFD. Another feature of the Dynon AP-74 Autopilot is 180 degree mode. This special mode is a way to initiate a quick turnaround should it be necessary. To engage the Autopilot in this mode, press and hold the AP switch on the AP-74 module for more than two seconds. When 180 degree mode is initiated, the Autopilot immediately engages in altitude and track hold modes with the heading bug set to 180 degrees from current ground track. If a GPS is not connected or available, it engages in heading hold mode. The autopilot then turns the aircraft to the left until it is flying in the opposite direction and then remains in track and altitude hold modes. There is also an optional autopilot pre-flight checklist that you can perform. Just enter the following EFIS menu on either the EFIS or EMS screen. On the EFIS menu here, I'm looking for the setup option, which is here. Now I'm looking for the autopilot option. Scrolling through more, here we go. Now I'm going to go down to the servo test and select. Please center all control surfaces and make sure they have a free range of motion. Press OK to begin the test. Control surface should now be at a position of pitch up and roll right. Did the control surface move as described above? Yes, it did. Control surfaces should now be at a position of pitch down, left roll. Did the control surfaces move as described above? Yes, they did. Disconnect test. Press disconnect switch to finish the test. Servo test was successful. Servo should now be disengaged. Press OK below to return to the autopilot setup menu. Well, I hope you have enjoyed our review today of the Dynon AP-74 autopilot. Thanks for visiting this virtual tour and please stop into Blue Skies Flying Services anytime to say hello. You can find more information on the Dynon AP-74 Autopilot on the web at DynonAvionics.com. Here you can download the entire operating manual on any of the Dynon products. Have a great flying season and fly safe. on the blooper reel, right? <laughs> <laughs>
time. Now that we have an overview of the systems that assist the autopilot, let's see what the cockpit really looks like. 